Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Balancing Heaven and Earth here on the Star Nations Radio Network. This is Denise Iwana Francisco, and I am your hostess for the evening. It's good to have you with me tonight. Hello, Rob. Hi, Mary Ann. It's good to see you both in the house. Thank you for being here with me. So tonight we're just going to have a quiet evening of introspection and contemplation and talking about this really wild roller coaster life that we all live walking between the worlds. Hello, Sonia. It's good to see you. Thank you for being here tonight. And if you would be so kind, perhaps if you feel so inclined to share this broadcast, if you like it. If you're tuning in for the first time, it's great to have you with. And uh, I'm just going to send this on over to Star Nations Radio Network Group so that they know that we are live and running the show. And thank you all for sharing this as you see fit to do so. And one more share so that we can get the show going. This is gonna be an interactive show tonight, everybody. So if you happen to be listening, thank you for that, Marianne. If you happen to be listening or watching tonight, uh, let's talk. Let's talk about what it is to walk between the worlds, to live in this time that we are living in. Hey, Kel, good to see you in the house this evening as well. And there, I am done with all the prerequisites for starting the show tonight. Welcome to Balancing Heaven and Earth and really to the life of a mystic. We're gonna talk about living a mystic's life and walking between the worlds. This is the time of the year when everybody is walking between the worlds, whether we realize it or not, because the veil is so thin at this point in time. And because we are in the season of Samhain, we're in the season of All Hallows, of Scorpio, and Julie Hedges, please add to all of that. Um, let's talk about living a mystic's life, because that seems to be a hot topic lately with people that I'm encountering, asking the question, you know, so Dana, how do, how do I balance being in this world and being in the non-physical world? Can you balance those worlds? The answer to that is yes. And oftentimes I get questions asked such as, um, so what is it like to be you, to be walking in the physical world and yet always ensconced in or surrounded by the non-physical realm? And we're going to talk about that. And if you have any questions that you would like to ask of me, let's talk. Let's have conversation tonight. So whatever is on your heart or on your mind, on your mystic's heart, please go ahead and ask and let's have dialogue. It's good to have you here too, Julie. Thank you for being here. Hello, Mary Ellen. It's good to have you here this evening as well. Kelly, hello, Kevin. Hey, little brother. <laughs> yeah. Sonia is saying, I've been having a rough time this past week with depression. Could that be part of it? Absolutely. Let's talk about that for a moment. And uh, Sonia, thank you for being honest enough to bring that up. And I'm sorry that my nose is itchy. I spent three hours at the dentist this afternoon, and I'm not quite sure what all was flying around and all this stuff that was going on, but my nose is itchy. So I apologize in advance for that. But Sonia, let's talk about that. Let's talk about depression. Let's talk about this time of the year when our senses are heightened. This is the time of the year when our senses are so exquisitely heightened. For many people who are very empathic, who are very sensitive, uh, part of the life journey is to, yeah, absolutely, Kevin. Oh, Kevin, you too. Okay, yeah. Part of the life journey for an empath is not to hide from being empathic. It's not to hide from living in the world or participating in this dance of human existence. Part of the journey for the empath, for the psychic sensitive person, is to learn how to walk between those worlds and to understand that if you are a sensitive person, 
such as yourself, I mean, Sonia, you are a sensitive woman. You just are, is to learn to discern what is mine and what is not mine. To disengage from people who will drain your energy, take from your energy, or lessen your energy, to disengage. We're going to talk about some of that tonight disengagement. And it's not about being disengaged from the world, but disengaged from drama or things that are beyond our control. And if you are a very sensitive person, this is the time of the year when we honor the dead. This is the time of the year when the dead who are really very, very much alive, by the way, those who love us who are on the other side, draw near. We, draw, we invite them to draw near. If we are participating in any of the ceremonies, such as the Day of the Dead, and you know, you were there when Delphina taught us about the Day of the Dead last month, when we learned about participating in inviting our relatives in in a good way this time of the year to honor them, we're coming up on Veterans Day. Veterans Day is a day in which we honor those that have gone to war, those that are in the armed forces. Those are, I really, veterans of life, right? Let's include veterans of life. So the veil is very thin. Spirits are coming and going. For those that are right now celebrating the lives of those that have crossed over, there's sadness. There's grief, there's mourning, there's learning how to cope with loss. Not everybody learns how to work through grief. There are a lot of people who think that they know how to work through grief and they feel that they have worked through their grief. And then this time of the year shows up when we honor the presence of those who have passed. When we think about the number of people on the earth plane that celebrate the Day of the Dead, that celebrate All Saints Day, that celebrate All Hallows, this is all about those that have crossed over, those that are living beyond the veil, and knowing that we are all related and we are all part of this divine tapestry, this matrix of energy, of life, of love, we cannot help but be affected by those that are working through grief right now. So yes, I do feel that it's part of sadness, of depression, because if you are a sensitive person and there are people around you celebrating and walking with the ancestors in this way, you're going to feel that. The other part of it is this is the time that goes, that we go within. And yes, Julie, you are just exactly what I was going to say. Just, Julie, that was pretty good. We are right in sync. And I'm going to pop that up on the screen for everybody. Yes. The season of opening and healing deep wounds, integrity, square meets up with the Chiron, the wounded healer, getting real with soul wounds. Yes. That's fat. Thank you for sharing that. I was just going to bring that up. This is the time where we go into the interior castle. And if we are dealing with the likes of Saturn, healer, heal thyself. Healer, heal thyself. This is the time of the year when people who are doing healing, their healing is out and about and it is dancing around them. It's working through them. It is the healer is healing themselves. And it is also the time of the year for those who have not, a lot of people think they've done their work. They espouse doing, I've done my work. What's the matter with all you all? You haven't done your work, right? Those people as well, in the denial of doing their interior work, there it is. There it is. So yes, this is the time of opening wounds. It's the time of going deep. It's the time, you know, the Scorpio, we like to go deep as Scorpios. And a lot of times we like to go where people don't like to go. I love that stuff. Let's go deep right into it. Boy, when Amantha Murphy was here for a week, 
let me just say, we all did a whole lot of work deep inside the shadow work, the deep wound work. And that work, hey, Lily, that work goes layer by layer by layer by layer. It's like an onion. And when Samhain hits, and the, particularly in the company of Saturn, we really need to take a deep look on the inside of us. And this is work that only we can do. Hey, Donna. That's right. Donna was here. Lily was here. It was deep, soulful work. There were things that happened in that room. And of course, it, hey, Connie. Everything that happened in that room stays in that room because of a code of ethics that you don't go blabbing about, you know, what stays in the Anipi and what goes on in the Anipi stays in the Anipi. What goes on in ancient Irish shamanism training stays in the training. You know, it's that's that sacred oath. But having said all of that, this is the time of healer, heal thyself. And if you know enough that you should be healing yourself and you are not, my goodness, the universe just keeps knocking ever harder at your door. You're going to take a look at that now? You're going to take a look at that now? Oh, you don't want to look now? You're going to blame everybody else for all of the problems in your life? Well, we're not going to, you know, just let you go with that. We're going to come back and we're going to revisit that. We're going to revisit that, that wound that's deep inside, it may be ancestral. If there are ancestral wounds that need to be healed right now, Saturn says, hello. Something would like to come up for review. What might that be? When so many people are working, some people are consciously working, some people are very unconsciously working. For those that are sensitive, that would be everybody who's listening right now. If you are sensitive, you are feeling this time of the year when we're honoring those that we love who have walked on. We're also in the United States gearing up for what we call the holidays or the holy days which can be tremendously lonely. It can be tremendously complicated when it comes to family members and family interactions and all of that sort of thing. And we're trying to sort it all out. So the holidays are perfect. They're magical. They're wonderful. And yet at the same time, when we look at the fact that we are spiritual beings having this human experience, what this time of the year really means, it's very holy time of the year. It's holy cow. Let's take a look within. Julie saying right on. <laughs> yes. Holy crap a diddle. Let's take a look at what's really going on. It's not your mother's fault that this you're this way. It's not your father's fault. It's not this. It's not that. What's going on within yourself? And it's not, you know, sometimes it is mom's fault. Sometimes it, you know what I'm saying. But Sometimes there are ancestral wounds. Sometimes there are lifetime wounds from this lifetime. Sometimes there are things that have happened in our life maybe we don't want to look at. This time of the year gives us the opportunity to go within, to investigate. Not easy, is it, Donna? Yeah. Or Lily. That was a pretty powerful week that we spent here talking about all of these sorts of things. This is a time of healing. Knock, knock, who's there? It's me. That's right. I'm here again for you to review. Yeah. I'm here again. Are you going to look at me this time or are you going to continue to blame that person or those people for all of the misery in your life or are you going to knock, knock, go within? Going to take a look at, you know, where the responsibility lies within yourself. Are you going to cut those cords? You're going to take responsibility. One of the lines that Amantha used over and over again during our week together was this one. Adults take responsibility. Children do not. Adults take responsibility. Children do not. And you know the fact that you know, and to give everybody the benefit of the doubt, not everybody is ready to do the work. 
Not everybody's ready to do the work. We all come to that place when we are ready. Sometimes it's when spirit knocks hard enough or loud enough. And sometimes it's just when we're ready and it can hit us. It can hit us to go into the sorrow, the things that we're grieving. Sometimes this time of the year brings depression because there are things within our, within us that we're grieving. Maybe we're grieving the loss of a marriage, the loss of a loved one. We're having time for introspection to grieve the way that we thought our life was going to be. There are so many things that when we let go of in our humanness, we need to take the time to grieve those things. We need to take the time to grieve those things. Here in the United States, at least the days are getting shorter. The time to go within is getting longer. <laughs> Hi, Jan. My niece Jan is on the show. Hi, sweetheart. I'm done being adult today, an adult today. Yeah. Well, because, you know, this is not only is this the time of introspection, look what you've dealt with in this past week, Jan. Look what you've had to deal with, grief in the deepest form of grief. And all the while, you know, this is a really good subject. My niece, Jan, I absolutely adore this young woman. Um, people look at Jan and they figure that she's the strong one and that Jan can just handle everything and take care of everything. And she does because she's a strong, vivacious, intelligent woman, a very hardworking woman. And yet when you're the strong one, who do you go to? Who do you go to when you're in that kind of grief? And when you are helping children through the type of grief that you've been helping the children through this week. Yeah. So you get a day off. You get a week off, honey. You just do. You absolutely do. Yeah. Hey, Cynthia. Sonia's saying, yes, all of the above, I guess. Yeah. Kelly, you know Jan. Yeah, those of you that know my sister, Barbara. Doll knife Jan is her daughter, and uh, she's a very special young woman to me. Very, very special to me. Not, not only is she all of those things, she's one of the funniest human beings that I've ever known. Her sense of humor is wickedly <laughs> spot on. So she has a lot of responsibility. And this week in particular, helping those little ones through the grief of losing their father. My goodness, Jan. Yeah, enough of being an adult for the week. You get to have your turn too, definitely. This is the time of the year when we reflect. And then when we add to that, the fact that the holidays, the holy days are coming up. For those of us that are walking between the worlds, we still, you know, even though as I'm sitting here in this room and uh, we're all with one another in cyber world, yes, you definitely wanna meet Jan. You certainly do, Donna. You definitely want to meet her. Everybody should meet her. Janelle is just marvelous. And she makes really good Indian tacos, too, just like Auntie Dell. <laughs> this time of the year, well, I guess we're just going to go here with this. I just wrapped up with my final clients of the day about, I guess it was around 7.30. And we got on the subject of those people who have crossed over, who haven't fully crossed over. We were talking about earthbound spirits. There are a lot of spirits this time of the year because the veil is so thin, because they are earthbound, they didn't fully transition for a variety of reasons, who have a lot of unfinished business between this world and what we call the next. It's really all one world. It's just with or without this human shell that we occupy. In my work as a seer, as a medium, people call me a medium. I really like the word seer better, I think. It's, I guess it's probably all semantics. But there are a lot of people who are walking this world between the worlds who have not fully transitioned, um, sometimes because of regret, 
sometimes because of unfinished business, because of sorrow that holds them here, their sorrow because of unfinished business, their sorrow because of the way that they were in this world. It's unfinished business. And so they are attached to this world in hopes that maybe they can finish the business that they didn't finish while they were here. Maybe, you know, share a few I love yous. I'm proud of you. I'm sorry. We also feel that. If you are sensitive, you are not only feeling what's going on with the people that are around you, the animals that are around you, what you're seeing on the news, what you're reading in the newspaper. You are also, believe it or not, whether you believe it or not, it's true. You are also feeling the sorrow, the longing, the unfinished business of those who have left their human body and are still on some levels existing here on the earth plane. Oftentimes we simply refer to those people as earthbound spirits. Most earthbound spirits are spirits with unfinished business. And usually the unfinished business has to do with hurt, regret. And again, you know, if you love somebody, please say, tell them that you love them. Don't wait until you're on the other side skidding around hoping that you know you can get the message through after you've you've lived your human life tell people that you love them tell people that you appreciate them so this is really a soup walking between the worlds and we all walk between the worlds whether we are super duper psychic sensitive a seer a medium an empath it doesn't matter you can be as unfeeling as I don't know, a piece of steel. And probably steel feels, I don't know if steel feels. Maybe Rob, you know, I don't know. But what I'm saying is you can be the most unfeeling, uncaring person thinking that you're on your own rock. I am a rock. I'm an island. Well, guess what? You can think that way. But the fact of the matter is you're wearing this flesh and bone and this is all energy and you are picking up on the energy of those around you, including all of Mother Nature and what exists in Mother Nature and what you do not see with your physical eyes. We're all feeling that. And sometimes people get tripped up. Why, why all of a sudden? Why all of a sudden am I depressed? Why am I sad? Well, if all of these energies are going on around us at this time of the year, we do walk between both worlds. That is not relegated to somebody who is a seer or a sensitive. Yeah. Oh, Ju hey, Jules. I just lost my beautiful cousin, earthly angel today. I wish you could have met her. I would have loved to have had you meet her. Oh, oh. And so when we leave when we leave this physical world, when we leave our physicality and we return to our essence, to our soul essence, some of us cross right over. Wow, I did it. Can you believe I did it? It's the hero's journey is complete. And for others, it isn't complete due to a variety. It can also be because of the circumstances of their death, sometimes shock. Sometimes the horror, people can be locked in the horror. Yeah, but the, uh, the sadness is there. The joy is there. We feel it all. We feel it all. And so if we have grief work to do, sometimes we can grieve about things we don't even know we're grieving about. We can have things in the interior castle that go back to the time when we were born to the time when we were four, five, six, seven years, just little people, you know, young children, if we were not allowed to express our grief, maybe there was grief because you had to move, you had to change schools. Maybe there was grief, unresolved grief, because grandma or grandpa died when you were little and it was never dealt with. It sits there. It doesn't go anywhere. It sits within us until eventually we go deep within and we talk to, you know, our soul, talk to creator. Why is the sadness within me? 
what is this that I'm feeling? Is it mine? If it is not mine, please take it from me. If it is mine, thank you for helping me work through it. For Julie, because she lost her beautiful cousin, I mean, there's going to be sadness. There's going to be grief. There will be a process of working through the loss. Julie has experienced more losses in the past, what, Jules, four years, five years, than probably anybody that I know at this time. And here's another one. Julie's mother and I worked at the newspaper together for many, many years. Her mom, Florence Flo, oh my God, I loved, 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 loved this woman. And of course, I love Julie as well. When Julie's mother was getting ready to cross over, and Julie, you know, feel free to, uh, to add anything you'd like to add at this time, what we're talking about. Uh, she called me and she said, hey, Dee, I thought you'd want to know that my mom is actively making her transition. And of course, I wanted to go see her mom. This was just, what, two years ago, Jules? And I mean, I met her mom when I was 17, when I had just moved here to Michigan. And I started working at the newspaper when I was 17. And I met Flo and Flo just kind of took me under her arm. And so when it was really snowy nights and it was going to be a long distance, Grand Rapids to where I was living during high school, Flo would say, you're going to stay with me in Grand Rapids. And she and I would have our own private sleepovers, me and Julie's mom. So she's very special to me. Julie is saying in six years, she's had 18 funerals. Yeah, 18 funerals in six years. And these aren't of distant, long lost. I haven't seen them in 50 years. These are people very close to Julie in six years. So there's a lot of grief to work through and a lot of celebration of life to work through. It's not all about grieving. There's also a celebration of the life. Well, when Julie called me and said, I thought you'd want to know that mom was passing. Of course I wanted to know. And I got to go visit with Flo and tell her what she meant to me about how much I appreciate her and to share a few giggles about some things that happened at the newspaper. But more than anything, to let her know how much I love her and to let her know how much her life impacted me. What a beautiful thing. That's having finished business. And I was so happy that Julie called me to be able to go and do that, to celebrate her life with her. Yes. Oh, I love you too, Jules. And Kelly, you'll appreciate this because um, Julie is the only other person who calls me Dee Dee. <laughs> so she picked up, you know, where you left off, Kel, with calling me uh, Dee Dee. So she shortened it up to Deed. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, what a beautiful thing. Great question, Mary Ann. Oh, Mary Ann, you sweet thing. How do we make sure we cross? I don't want to be stuck. You're not going to be stuck. Here's how people get stuck. Let's talk about this for a moment. This is a great question. I just had this conversation with my clients who were here. They're like, well, how do you get to be like earthbound? How do you get stuck? Well, a lot of reasons that we can get stuck. And you're right about that, Jan. Yes, it is hard to be related to everybody there on the reservation and always having to bury somebody. Yeah, there's so much of that that goes on, particularly on the reservation, because, you know, there it's all it's tribal and familial and everybody knows everybody. And through the worst of times and the best of times, there you are. And, you know, and it's particularly hard, niece. I understand this because you're a leader. People look to you to lead. They just do. You are a natural born leader. And so when you are a woman who is a leader or a man who is a leader, particul particularly being a woman who is a leader, when it comes time to uh, talking about spirit, talking about death, talking about birth, those are usually topics that women that we're drawn into. 
some of that is changing. We do have men like Todd and Rob and David Fix and David Sturk and CAD, you know, all of that. Uh, so men are entering into those conversations more, but typically it's women who are, who are asked to lead the way when it comes to the topic of death or helping children understand death or preparing for death, spirit doula work, preparing for the funeral, getting the star quilts together, getting the memorial service together. All of those things, those are typically, typically handed by, handled by women. And, you know, you're a leader. You're always going to be a leader, Jan. That's, yeah, I honor that. Absolutely. And so, Marianne, to your question, how do people get stuck? Well, typically people get stuck because they are so consumed by and ensconced in their human life. They are their stuff. They're their stuff. We all know people who are more concerned with their stuff than they are with living a human life. I was just having this conversation uh, with my client and he said to me, I finally come to the realization that continuing to build my company, that continuing to build my business really doesn't serve my happiness or my wellness or my health. But what does serve that is being with my family. I don't want my whole life at the end of my life to be, geez, didn't he build a great company? Wasn't he a really wealthy man? That's wonderful. What I really want them to say, Denise, is he was he was a great family man. He was a wonderful husband. He helped in the community. He was a great grandpa. He had good friends and he was a good friend. That's what I want it to say. I don't want it to be about how much money or how many cars or and we all know those people that that's what it's about. For some people, it's excruciating when they pass to let go of their stuff. They are their car. They are their house. They are their zip code. They are all of those things. And so it can be really hard to leave. It can also be unfinished business. And we all know what I mean by that. Unfinished business. Unfinished family business. Unfinished business. You know, sometimes I've encountered in my life as a modern day mystic that people can be earthbound on the other side until they are vindicated on this side, particularly when I am working with, I do work with uh, close, um, our cold case detectives. I do work with cold case detectives. And there are times when it can be a cold case, 20, 30, 40 years old, where the person hasn't fully transitioned because on this side there's unfinished business and they haven't yet uh, been vindicated justice hasn't been served that can hold people here because by golly they want to make sure that the person is caught and sometimes they stay here um, particularly in the case of people who are victims to uh, serial killers they want they voluntarily stay very very connected to help that murderer be found so that the murder ends. I hope that that made sense so that the rampage or the continuation of the serial, serial killings ends. So there are times when I'm called uh, to work on a cold case as a medium uh, to get information. And so there are those that are voluntarily here. And then there are those who are just really angry because somebody killed them, somebody murdered them. They weren't ready to go. In their mind, they weren't ready to go. And by God, I'm not crossing over as long as that person is still roaming around, footloose and fancy free. And Sonia is saying, I'm trying so hard to get this through to my mom. I don't care about stuff. I don't want stuff. Yeah, well done, good and faithful. Yeah. Carla Jo is saying, there are also those who are held here because family will not let them move on. Yeah. Yes. 
Some are held here because family will not let them move on. Marianne saying, thank you, Dana. What a relief. You're welcome, sweetie. We do wonder. But, you know, if we're earthbound, when we look at the word earthbound, it means we are bound to earth. So there is something here on this earthly plane that is holding us. So it can be unresolved issues. It can be unresolved grief, unfinished business, anger, attachment to stuff. And as Carla Jo, our eclectic pagan, was just saying, uh, those that are held here because loved ones will not let them go. Yes. Let's talk about that for a minute since we're just having a chat away night. This is a great conversation. Let's talk about that for a minute. So what's healthy grief and what's unhealthy grief? Well, I would have to say that that depends on the person. There's no one way to grieve. There just isn't. There's not one way to grieve. There's not one, you know, get over it in three days. Here, here in the U.S., we're famous for you get three days off and then you just need to get back at it. Get back to the office and put on your happy face. And let's just pretend like nothing happened because three days is quite long enough to wrap all of that up. That's not healthy either. We have to grieve. We have to let those emotions out or the emotions become caught up within us. And then we have dis-ease. We have illness. All of those things uh, go on when we don't work through uh, what it is that we need to work through. Unhealthy, that's unhealthy. We have to take the time to let go, to grieve, to reminisce, all of those things. There's no money in grief. Yeah, there's no money in grief. There's a lot of money in funerals, though. Boy, I tell you, sometimes I cannot believe what people spend on a funeral because they have to. I mean, I think that there are other options that are finally being born here in the West. Uh, but boy, there's a lot of money in death. There's no doubt about that. But you're right um, in grief. Um I've met people where I've had to very gently suggest that uh, they get counseling, they get therapy, somebody to help them work through the depth of their grief. Because our, you know, one of my favorite lines in my new book, Prayers and Incantations to the Light, actually is not anything I dreamed up. It was something that came to me, and Jan, you'll remember this because you were there at the family Wachipi, the, uh, the um, powwow that the family had there on Pine Ridge in October. It was Chris Eaglehawk. He was, um, he, he's great. He is great as an MC at powwows, but it was the wiping of the tears ceremony. And I was going through the wiping of the tears ceremony because it had been a year since my father had crossed over. And one of the lines that he said, and I have it in the book, is this. Your, your loved ones want you to be happy. They want you to have joy back in your life. They don't want you to cry anymore. They want you to live a life and have joy. In fact, I'm going to look that up for just a moment. I'm going to grab the book because I don't want to misquote what it was that Chris said. It's so beautiful. Here's what he said. Your loved ones want you to be happy. They want you to go on. Life without them will be diff a different life, but you must go back to your life and not hold them to earth with your tears. Chris Eaglehawk. Your loved ones want you to be happy. They want you to go on. Yes, life without them is different. It's always going to be different but they want you to go on, to move on. And when five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, I've met people 20 years after the fact that literally have not moved off of the dime of their grief. And I meet them for the first time and I ask, well, have you ever been to a grief group? Have you ever been to counseling so you can just have somebody 
Well, no, Denise, I haven't. Yeah. Yeah. Angie, oh, Angie, here's another person with one of my favorite moms in the world too, Dolly. You know, the grief journey is very difficult, but also so many lessons with it. Yes, there are. There sure are. And, you know, I feel very honored that when Angie's mother was transitioning, she reached out to me. I was in Texas at the time. I was down at the Restoration Ranch. And I loved her mother as well. And she got a hold of me and she said, Dee, you know, mom is transitioning. Can you help? Can you help? And so I wrapped up at Restoration Ranch early. I let Dee and Beth know that I couldn't, you know, I didn't I have the time to go to dinner that evening. And they said, oh, do you have something else going on? And I, has, I said, I have sacred work. My friend Angie has reached out to me because her mother, a beautiful soul, is making her transition. And she's asking me to assist. So I'm going to go back to my hotel room and, you know, do what it is that I do to assist. And that's what I did. What an honor. What an honor. You know, between Dolly and Flo and others that I'm asked to help assist in that way. That's walking between the worlds. It's understanding the grief. I was sad when Flo died. I was sad when Dolly died because, you know, you miss knowing that they are here. But one of the things about being me is this. I've also known since I was a little girl, what Chris Eaglehawk said is true. When our loved ones cross over, when they pass, when they go on, they're at peace. They're at home. They are in the love of the creator. They are in that love of the creator. By whatever name you call creation, the creator, our maker, Wakantanka, all of that, all of that. Their home in love. I have never, I have never, and I'm gonna be 55 next week. In all of my years as a seer and a hearer, I don't know that that is a word, a hearer, I just made it up right now, a hearer. But because of what it is and the way that the creator made me, no one who is fully transitioned has ever said, gee, it's really crappy here. This is just rotten. No. What I've always heard since I was a very little girl, and it's expressed in many different ways, there's so much love here. There is so much love here, Dana, Denise by whatever name they call me. There is so much love here. Please tell my loved ones that there's love here. I'm loved here. Yeah. Uh, yes, but even when they leave, they are still with you. And I wanted to talk about that. So when we hold them here and we don't allow them to fully cross over because we're still grieving them with every ounce of our being and we can't let them go. And it's understandable in some cases. I mean, grief, loss is loss and pain is pain. When they are fully crossed over, I think what some people maybe have never learned or were never taught, and let's, I wanna talk about this for a moment, our loved ones who have crossed over, who have gone home, there is no time limit for how often they can come to visit you, when they can come to visit you. There is no time limit. It, in our humanness, we place limits. I always say we do a really fine job of limiting the creator, don't we, in our humanness? Do animals go to heaven? Nirvana, what, you know, whatever we want to call that state after the human state. Yes, they do do that. Everything created by the creator goes home to creator. There are no exceptions to that rule except those that are stuck uh, or are earthbound voluntarily or, you know, for a variety of reasons. But we're all creations of the creator. We're all, I believe, created out of love. 
And to that love and to that light and to that creation, we return. Since I was a little girl, I've seen it. I know it. I've been visited by it. I walk in it. That's why I do this show. That's why I write the books that I write, to help people understand that this is not the only gig around. And your question is a really good one, Julie. And I just want to back up to something Nicole Werner said. Yes, I want to be buried under a baby tree, no casket. I want to nourish life. Just need a shovel and a tree to plant me first. Yes. And, you know, we're, we're doing more of that here in the West. And I'm really, really happy about that. I am very happy about that. Yeah, me too. Just plant me in a pod, right? Let me sprout into a tree and then my face can come out. I don't know. There goes my imagination again. I can be the face on the tree. Lisa, I pray our babies are dancing with the angels and are at peace. I miss them so much without even knowing them. One day, one day I will meet them. And you know what? You have met them, sweetheart. You carried them. You know them. You know them. Your soul knows them. Their soul knows you, Lisa. And the beauty of the relationship that you had with those children for as long as we have them. My first child, I miscarried. It was very traumatic. And it happened in just not very nice circumstances. And it is that situation. Our souls know one another. For however long we as, a, as women carry that child, our souls have agreed that we would be together energetically for that long. And we don't always know why. Sometimes we find things out after we leave our physicality and we all meet up again and we say, oh, so that's why. That's why we agreed to that relationship for four months or five months or three weeks or whatever that happens to be. Yes, that I'm really, I'm really glad that you brought that up. I'm really glad. Yes, yeah, so sweetheart, on a soul level, you know each other very intimately to have carried those babies. And you will see each other again and talk about it. Aw, oh, yes, it's not, yeah, yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Julie, my friend Julie. I had a big trigger of grief over the weekend. What do we need to know about those triggers? Are they a sign that we've slipped? No. They're not a sign that you've slipped, Julie, not at all. What it means is that it's telling you you're ready to go a little bit deeper. You're ready to go a little bit deeper. Or maybe you're ready to go a lot deeper. When we revisit grief, when, you know, and let's let's just be frank here. Let's be honest here. Let's let's talk about the grief of losing our innocence. Last week when I was on the show with my friend Meg, we talked about, you know, losing innocence to molestation, to having somebody expose himself. There is a loss of innocence for some men and women at very young ages. And Jan, you know what I'm talking about, particularly uh, there where you live. There are so many ways to lose our innocence to drugs, to alcohol, to domestic violence. And we think that we've grieved through that, we've worked through those processes because by God, after all, we are adult spiritual people. We should have worked through all of that. Why does it revisit? Why is there a trigger? I believe, Julie, anyway, that those triggers are actually saying, okay, Dana, now you're, you're ready to go a little bit deeper. Amantha Murphy is here. You're surrounded by nine other beautiful souls. Let's go deeper. Let's revisit it at another level. Or as Sandy Herrick would say, at a different octave. You haven't slipped. No, 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 no. Don't be hard on yourself about that, Julie. It means you're ready to go deeper. Why? Because you've done the work up to this point to take it deeper. I hope that that makes sense. I'm, I'm hoping that that was helpful. 
if you have more, we want to talk more about that, let's just do that. Let's do that. Okay. Well, Nicole, you know, you can go to YouTube or you can go to this page, Balancing Heaven and Earth page that I have on Facebook and it's there. Um, yeah, it's, you know, it's one of those things that we do grieve the loss of our innocence. And sometimes we don't tell anybody. And the fact that we couldn't tell anybody, right? Who do you tell? Who do you trust to tell? What happened when you told? What happened when you told, right? So many things go on. Hello, Michael Jason Grossman. It's good to see you, my friend. Oh, you're welcome for that. All right, CJ is saying, Dad says to burn him up, put him in a mason jar and bury him in the backyard. Well, there you go. Just get her done. <laughs> Just get her done. Yeah. All right, Nicole, man, I wish I, oh, yeah, well, you know, go to Balancing Heaven and Earth and, or YouTube, and there it will be. There it will be. Yeah, there, this is a very deep conversation about some things. And so, because it is that time of the year when we do reflect. Hi, Adam. It's that time when we reflect, when we go within, even if we are not conscious that we are going within. All of us, you know, I would say we've come to a, a place where we understand that the seasons and I and we are not separate. Are not separate. The season of autumn, the season of going within is all about Grandmother Earth here in the West. If we're living here on Turtle Island, we are ensconced in it. We cannot escape it. There are certain seasons of the year. Um, mass consciousness affects all of us. Easter is a really good uh, example of that. Janine Reamers, such feelings of unease these last couple of weeks, like something quivering on the edge right now. Yes. Well, there's the mass consciousness of the human race right now. What's going on on earth? What on earth is going on? What on earth is going on? There are earthly things that are going on and there are spiritual things that are going on. Whether we want to say we are a spiritual person or not, people will say to me, Denise, I'm just not spiritual. Okay, but you are a spirit inhabiting a human body. And that divine light within you is very sensitive. And it's part of the collective consciousness. If there are things going on on the earth, seen and unseen, you're going to feel them. Whether you call yourself spiritual or religious or not. There is unease, Janine. This is a very tumultuous time on Grandmother Earth. This is a time of great change. Carl and Ortrun, uh, Franklin and I are going to talk about this tomorrow night on the Mystery School. We'll be here at 8 o'clock again uh, tomorrow night. We're going to be talking about this ascension process uh, that we're all uh, going through at this time. So yes, when somebody on the other side of the world feels, we feel. We can't not. We can't not. Here in Michigan, we call it uh, the time of the Eighth Fire Prophecy. Uh, with my relatives out west, we would say this is the time of the white buffalo calf teachings or mitakoye oyasi, mitakoyas, and we are all related spiritually speaking. Let's talk about this from a spiritual perspective, walking between the worlds. We're all saying what on earth is happening. I think that that's a pretty fair statement. What on earth is happening? What on earth? What in tarnation? as Donna would say, is happening. What is going on? We can see the physicality of it. We just have to look at the news or newspapers and blah, there it is. What spiritually is going on? Well, my Lakota relatives, the elders would say, this is the time of Mitakoyasi, Mitakoye Oyasi. We are all related. This is the time that we have come to on the earth plane, the time of the return of the white buffalo teachings. You and I are related. 
You and I and every living thing seen and unseen are related. What's happening right now on the earth plane is giving us all wonderful opportunities to look without judgment at our brothers and our sisters, our relatives. The four-legged kind, the winged kind, the two-legged kind. And to grow our heart of compassion, to see that we are more alike than we are different and to begin living as though we are all related. I've always said, and I've always maintained, people probably get tired of hearing me say this, all children are our children. All children are our children. All living things are our brothers and sisters. I believe that. For me, it comes down to the little ones, to the young ones. I have such a tender heart for all things. Well, you know, there was a, a, a dead little critter here this morning. And, you know, here I went to see Todd and the tears are coming down my face. And I said, it's dead and I can't pick it up. I can hardly look at it. And will you take care of it? And oh, just a little. Yeah. We are all related and all of these things are coming to the surface. Are you going to love them anyway? Are you going to love them because their skin color is different? Their eye color is different? Their language is different? Because maybe they're not spiritually on track the same place you are. Maybe they don't go to the same church or synagogue or sit under the same tree. Yeah. Yeah, there you go, Adam. You have to be your own beacon of joy. Absolutely. You got to shine your light. You've got to shine your light. And sometimes we have to love people from a distance. We just have to continue to shine our light and be in our light. And be in our light. Absolutely. Hey, Lisa Sandine, birthday girl. It was your birthday. Yeah. Oh, this is a great question. After a loved one's passing, yes, Michael's uh, grandparents were both laid to rest this past week. And how do you know when someone you love who has crossed over is with you? How do you know that? Anybody who's watching me right now and you're in the thread, Michael needs help with this. How did you know when someone you love is with you? What are the signs that they give you? Right. Sometimes when they are with us, we dream about them. They come to us in our dreams. Sometimes we can feel their presence. We just, Michael, we just know. We just know. We can sense it. Sometimes we can smell their perfume. Right. We can smell the cigar that they smoked or the, the cologne that they wore. Sometimes we can actually hear them in our mind and in our heart say, I'm here. I'm here. Yes, Adam is saying, my father passed in 2009 and I still feel him through dreams and animals. Will you talk about that a little bit more, Jocelyn? How do you know when an animal is saying, hey, I'm a sentry here. I'm being sent on behalf of. Because, yes, she's right about that. There are times... When, and we can see maybe a bird peck, 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 pecking, wants to get your attention, wants to get your attention, pay attention to that. You can feel it. That bird wants to get my attention. I had a client once, honestly, had a dragonfly at his mother's funeral. Mother loved dragonflies. Dragonfly landed right on his nose while they were at the graveside. And he said to me, bless his heart, Denise, do you think that that was my mother letting me know that she's okay? I said, I do. I do believe that. Yeah. And music. Yes. Sometimes favorite songs can go on. Favorite songs can go on. And there we are. There are a couple of country and Western tunes that come on. Some Hank Williams will come on and I know that it's my dad. 
some honky tonk music will come on, I know that it's my dad, particularly if it's Don Williams. If a Don Williams song or Conway Twitty comes on, I'm like, hey, dad, thanks for letting me know you're here. Right? I can see him, but sometimes it comes on. Oh, I love this. I'm going to share these, everybody. This is so important because, you know, yeah, a feeling of love in your heart. You can feel it. You can feel it. You know, our loved ones, when they leave, they're not really gone. They're not really gone. Yeah. Lisa is saying, just after my friend Susan died, a snake crossed my path in the woods and laid on the path in front of me. Susan's favorite yoga pose was cobra. I'm sure it was her saying hi. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you, everyone, for sharing all of these. You know, this, this show is seen by many, many, you know, hundreds of people. And what you're sharing tonight is very deep. It's very personal to you. And it helps other people to know that they are not alone, that they are not alone. Jocelyn is saying, when my dad died, I asked for a sign. All of a sudden in Florida, three blue herons were out the window, oh, they started dancing and singing, then all three started in flight, and then one went alone. Yeah. So, Michael, in answer to your question, the veil between the worlds is very thin, particularly this time of, of the year. And Kelly is saying, I like this too, I get a rush of tears, not sadness, just my body reacting to energy. Yeah, sometimes all of a sudden we can begin to think about our loved one. All of a sudden, out of the blue, we can be going and doing our grocery shopping and, you know, looking at cantaloupes or whatever. And all of a sudden, a memory floods through. Where does that come from? Sometimes our loved one sends a memory to us. Sometimes they stroll right down memory lane and sometimes they instigate the memory. And for those of you that are watching, for those of you that have, have lost a loved one, they've crossed over, they're fine. Sometimes we can hear them in our head and people will say, Denise, I think I'm daydreaming. I'm hearing things. Is there something wrong with me? In their innocence, in their purity of their grief, they will say, is there something wrong? I, I know I heard my mother speaking to me, but Denise, how can she speak to me? She's dead. Well, she's dead to her physical body. Yeah, the physical body is gone, but mom is not gone. Her soul essence is very much alive. And frankly, everyone, there are people who cross over that are more alive in their non-physicality than they were in their physicality. Some people here on the earth plane, believe it or not, live a half-life. They really don't live at all. They live in constant fear. They live fear of judgment, fear of living, right? I always say, don't be afraid, be alive. You came here to be alive. <laughs> so do that, shine your light, hold the light, be who you came here to be. Fully realize all of you. Take off the masks of what society wants you to, blah, blah, blah. Shine your light. Be who you came here to be. Be that. Because when we cross over, we get to be all that plus some things. Don't live a half-life. There are some people who have lived a half-life, and when they come and they visit me in their non-physicality, they're finally living again. They were afraid to live their human life. They were afraid of what people were going to say, afraid of criticism, afraid of judgment. Boy, we have a lot of lists, don't we, in our humanness? So how do I see? Yeah, and CJ is saying sometimes she actually hears people calling her name. I'm grateful for you too, Lisa. I just want to say that. I'm grateful for all of you. Here we are having this conversation. We never know who's going to see the show, who needs to see the show, beginning with Sonia's question about depression. 
why do people become depressed at this time of the year? There are many, many reasons for it. And then Julie chimed in with, you know, here we are in Saturn. Saturn saying, go in, let's heal. And usually one of the things we do need to heal is the grief. Yeah, we can hear spirit calling our name. We can hear our loved ones talking to us and you are hearing them. You are hearing them. I just want you to know that somebody out there must be wondering. Yeah. I find when loved ones, when lost loved ones weigh heavy on your mind, if you look closely, you get a sign they're with you. Absolutely, Jules. Yes, when they're in your mind, they're in your mind, they're in your mind. I say to people, just be with that for a minute. Sit with that. Mom, is that you reaching out to me? Dad, what is it that you want me to know? And usually what they just want you to know is we're here. I'm here. It's not that they don't have things to do and business to do on the other side, right? They have the freedom to come and go. God doesn't place any limits on that. Creation doesn't place any limits on this. Yeah. Julie is saying, thank you for this beautiful discussion. We're doing deep work tonight. Absolutely, Julie. And you're participating in that. We're all doing it. And I just want to let you all know that by virtue of participating in all of this, whether you're listening right now or at a later time, you're participating in this conversation and it may raise some things in your mind. Maybe you have lost a child prematurely. Maybe you have wondered, well, was that really grandma letting me know she was okay? Yeah. I have also learned that using a totem, yeah, helps channel your focus. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, oh, this is good conversation. Cynthia, I hear them talk in their own words. I feel them and often through music, a certain song. Yeah, how do they do that? Let's talk about that. How, so how do they do that? How do they do that? How do they let us hear it? It's all energy. It's all energy. Hey, Lily. Yeah. Some of the most amazing things happen to us when we are traveling. We can be between the worlds. How many of you have gone to Gettysburg? How many of you have traveled with me and Minnie? Right? Minnie and I are getting ready to uh, take a group of people to Italy and Greece in 2018. We're going to Assisi. We're going to a lot of sacred spots. We are going to the Vatican, the Vaticano. Uh, we are going to Santorini. We're going to very sacred spots all through Italy and Greece. Walking between the worlds and being sensitive means that you're not only picking up on the people and their history in those countries, but we can also pick up on the energies of history. The energies of history. For any of you that have visited a battlefield, one of the most um, emotional places for me still to go to is Wounded Knee. And oftentimes when I'm there visiting my relatives, my sister, my nieces and nephews, my brother, um, I'll often say to Barb, Barb, can we stop at the knee for just a moment? Can we just go there? And I just want to offer a little tobacco to the ancestors that are there. And when I'm in the presence, there's this sadness. And sometimes my third eye, this, this eye, this ajna, I see physically with these, I see spiritually with this eye, the sixth sense, this ajna, I can see history repeating on a track. And I hear the stories and I'm with it. And sometimes as I'm there, I just listen to the stories. I listen to them tell me their stories and I'm with it and I honor their story. Just like tonight, we're with each other. We're honoring the stories. The same things happen when we travel. Sometimes they are so splendid, the experiences that we have. And sometimes we feel the joy, the elation, history. Sometimes we can feel the depths of history and ancestry. 
It's part of the reason that I created Mystic Travels and I asked many to uh, co-pilot with me to become my business partner at Mystic Travels. We've got what I think two spots open for the Italy and Greece tour. If you would like to take it, check it out, mystictravels.webs.com. Take a look. We're going to go to some pretty amazing places together. Can't wait. We feel those places sometimes right during the holidays. Here we are. Here we are. Yes, <laughs> Rob is saying, I have a hard enough time driving through West Ionia. A battlefield would be horrifying. Yes. And it can be. Adam is saying, I tend to get overwhelmed. I struggle with protecting myself from all that energy and emotion. Yeah. Yeah. Because we are energetic beings. Yes. You know, music is emotional. Vibration can bring us to, our to tears. The vibration of a loved one. The vibration of artwork can bring us to tears. I'll never forget. Well, Julie, if you're still in the house, Rob, you were here, right? Julie is the author of The Tarot Journey. And I still talk about this moment. I was just talking about it a couple of days ago. We had a book signing event for Julie for The Tarot Journey here this summer. And Julie mentioned that she had always wanted to sing a piece from Evita. Don't um, cry for me, Argentina. And so Minnie Kansman looked and, and she said, well, I think she should do it. And I said, well, I think she should too. And so we were all on the upper deck of our home. We call it the lanai. And we all exited and we all went down into the garden, the lower gardens. And Julie stayed on the lanai on the balcony here. Rob was up here. He was playing music, beautiful music all evening. And she sang don't cry for me, Argentina. And I will tell you, there was not a dry eye. Why? Julie was in her passion. Julie was in her passion. We could feel her passion. And we wept at the depth of her passion. It wasn't even our passion. She brought her passion to us. Yeah. Argentina never listens. Yeah. Yes. Music can bring us to great depth of emotion, to great heights of emotion. And the music of the spheres, whether we hear them or not, thank you, Pythagoras, are always playing. Sometimes we know that angels are about. How do we know when an angel is present? I get asked that. Little kids usually know because little kids remember. You know, nobody's told them that, right? How do we know when angels are around? Sometimes we know when angels are, are around because all of a sudden we hear music, angelic music. I had a woman once say to me, Denise, I was sitting in church. She was sitting in mass. She said, the strangest thing happened. And I think you're probably the only person I can tell. You won't think I'm crazy. Uh, but I was sitting in church. Mass was done. I was just sitting, you know, everybody was kind of getting their stuff together and doing what people do after church. And all of a sudden I heard a choir, but it wasn't the church choir, Denise. It was another kind of choir. I have never heard music like this. I've never heard voices like this, but honestly, Denise, I heard it. It was there and it felt angelic to me. My God, Denise, were those angels singing to me in church because they weren't human beings? And I looked at her and I said, yes, Mary. Those were angels. She said, nobody else heard them, Denise. Why was it me? Why was I the only one? Well, what a blessing. Just say, thank you, Mary. Thank you, angels, for letting me hear that. Sometimes... We can hear angelic music when we're just going about our business. We can hear it right out loud. I call it right out loud, right out here. Sometimes we can hear it within us. Sometimes when an angel is present, there's a light in the room. Sometimes it's a little shimmering light, maybe that just catches our eye. Sometimes it's an angel saying right out loud, Dana, pay attention. Pay attention. 
Sometimes it's an orb of light. And then, of course, there are those times, thank you, Michelangelo, that we see angels fully winged. Right? And those are all, of course, archetypical. The wings representing the heavens and, you know, the halo with the divinity and all of that sort of a thing. How do we know? But here's the biggest way that we know. Just like the biggest way that we know that our loved ones are with us, we feel it right here in our heart. Right here, right in the high heart. Right in our heart. Our heart has so many brain cells. Right? When we balance our brain with our heart, we have this wonderful mind this God mind, creator mind that we create when we balance the brain with the heart. We know, we can feel it when an angel is around. Sometimes we meet angels unaware. We meet them in obscure places. That's why we should always entertain strangers, right? As the saying goes. Because sometimes we do entertain angels unaware. We know and we feel it. Yeah. We know when our loved ones are around, we feel it. That's walking between the worlds. These feelers that we have. Yeah. Help us feel. This antenna, this human body is actually a wonderful antenna that we occupy. Some of us are just more sensitive than others. And it's not about hiding from the, your sensitivities. It's about owning them and working with them and, and getting to know them. So uh, let's see here. Lisa is saying, sometimes I hear the trees talk. Oh, yes. Do they talk? Yes. All of nature speaks. What a great question, Lisa. Lisa is a magnificent yoga instructor, so very in touch with body, mind, spirit, emotions. I was just at yoga the other night. I think I'm going to sunrise yoga in the morning here in Lowell. Yes, trees talk. Donna is saying, oh yes, I love talking to the trees. Thanks, Jules. Yes, I love talking to the trees. The trees speak to us through our senses. We can feel them. They speak to us energetically. The wind speaks to us. The stones speak to us. The plants speak to us. The elements speak to us. Everything is always speaking to us, talking to us if we listen, but not just with these ears. Because you see, walking between the worlds means that you listen through your energy centers, through your emotions, through your sensitivities, not with these physical ears, but with the chakras, the energy centers that are, you know, about and here in the throat. This is where we hear, we hear with our sensitivities. We see with our sensitivities. All of this flesh helps us, of course, with the tactile environment that we're in, but the, the, the chakras, the energy system, this antenna that we inhabit, Yes, the water speaks. The water speaks. Absolutely, it does. Yeah, absolutely, Rob. Yes, trees love to talk. All of nature loves to talk. I was very blessed to grow up in a family where we were taught that everything, everything is the creator. Everything embodies creator. I was always taught that I grew up in a very, very Catholic military household, as, as most of you know, very Catholic, very military. Um, but the basic premise growing up was that everything is alive with the creator. Everything. Everything that we see, everything that we don't see is the creator in expression, including me and you. We have to really take care because we are spirits in a physical body. We need to take care of our physical body. We need to nurture ourselves. We have got to have good boundaries 
with people, places, situations, and things. That's about being responsible for walking between the worlds. We have a physical body, we need to maintain it. We have a spiritual body, we need to maintain that. We have an emotional body, we need to maintain that. We have a mental body, we need to maintain that. And oftentimes that means boundaries. Having a spiritual path, walking a spiritual path doesn't just mean that you're gonna be a doormat for other people's stuff. That means for both the unseen and the seen world. So for those of you that are listening tonight, because you get visited by things that you don't like to be visited by, don't let them visit you. Say enough already. No, you're not welcome here. You are not welcome here. And say it like you mean it. Not like, geez, you know, I really wish you wouldn't come here because you're kind of scaring me. No, say it like you mean it. You are not welcome here. And the same should be true in our physical life. Disengage from spiritual drama, physical drama, mental, emotional drama. Disengage from it. Be healthy. So that you can shine your light, just exactly what Adam said. Hold the light, baby. How can you hold the light if people are draining it from you, trying to take it from you? You can't. You cannot hold your full wattage if there are spiritual things going on that are draining your light or if there are situations or people, jobs, whatever it happens to be, that are also sucking the life force out of you for whatever reason. And it's not to say we're not supposed to be helpful and, and those kind of, you know what I'm saying, good, healthy Boundaries. Disengage. Take care of yourself. It's not our job to take care of everybody else as we're walking these worlds. I believe that we came here to shine our light. I believe that we came here to fully realize and express ourselves. And all along the way, having this human experience of the earth plane, how delightful. And why would we deny somebody else the experience of healing their own wounds? Thank you, Julie. We cannot heal the wounds that other people fail to look at or to deal with or aren't ready yet to deal with. It is not our job to heal those things. It's our job to take a look at our own things. Right. I've got a daughter and a, those of you that have daughters, you know, daughters are really good at helping with that. Right, Kelly and Nicole. <laughs> yeah, my daughter keeps me right on top of it. Any little sort of thing, mom, you need to. Yeah, mom, 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 right. heal or heal thyself. Mom, are you sure you're going to be OK with that? Because, you know, yes, daughter. This is a magnificent time of the year. It's the time to go in. It's the time to reflect. Time to go deep. And if you are revisiting, as Julie brought up, you've not slipped back. You've slipped further in. Further in. Walking between these worlds of physical and non-physical reality, of mental, emotional, spiritual, and physical reality, it's magnificent. We chose to do this, to have this experience to have it fully, to be alive, not to be afraid. When spirit knocks, it's our choice to say hello or goodbye. When our loved ones leave their physicality, they've not really left. They've only left their carcass. They've not left. Walking between the worlds means that we need to do it with integrity and respect for ourselves for others, loving some up close and loving others from a distance, that's okay too. Taking care of this magnificent human vehicle that we occupy at this time and understanding, I'm so glad that you brought it up, Lisa, all of creation is always speaking, always teaching for the one with eyes to see, with ears to hear, a heart to feel. The entire universe is alive. The stars 
speak. They sing. The whales in the ocean sing what the stars are singing. It's magnificent. And, you know, one of the things I just want to leave everybody with, thanks for hanging in for an extra half hour this evening. If you love somebody, tell them you love them. Don't wait. Tell your kid you're proud of them. As I said to my client tonight, did you tell your son you love him yet? No, but you know, when we see each other now, we bump shoulders. You know how guys do. I said, so you're working up to, I love you, son. He said, yeah, I'm just not there yet, but I'm getting closer. You know, now we're doing this thing, this guy thing. I said, good. One day, you know, when you're on the other side, you'll be happy that you started with the shoulder bump and moved up to, I love you, son, and I'm really proud of you. So he doesn't have to hear it from me. Doesn't have to hear it from me. All right. So if you love somebody, tell them you love them. Shoulder bump. If you got a shoulder bump, you know, whatever that is. Hug really hard. <laughs> whatever that is. Write a note. Send a card. Whatever it happens to be, because that helps to balance both worlds as well. And, uh, you know, as we wrap up this evening with really four minutes to go, I know that a lot of you have a lot of cool things going on. Donna, you've got some collage quests going on. Julie, I'm sure you got gigs going on. You know, type it into the chat. Type it into the chat. Expect nothing and enjoy everything. That's my friend Linda Greasyak. Linda, the Grease, if you happen to be listening tonight, I love that line. Expect nothing, enjoy everything. Yeah, I love you all. If it weren't for all of you, I wouldn't be doing what I do. And I wouldn't be able to realize inch by inch myself if, I, if you weren't all in my life. Life is magical. Life is magical. You're magical. <laughs> Don't ever forget that. You know, if I were to leave this body this evening, I would want you all to know that you are loved more than you can possibly imagine in our humanness. I would want you to know that. I would want you to know that you are magical, mystical, magnificent beings of light who have come here to this outpost known as Grandmother Earth to shine your light, your stardust, your super supernova light. And we've only come here for a very short while called a human lifetime, everybody. Very short while. Sing your song, dance your dance. I love you too, Julie. Sing your song, dance your dance. Be you. Be everything that you came here to be. Everyone who loves you is waiting for it anyway. They're waiting for you to realize the fullness of your being. With that, everyone, blessings be. Dream well. And remember, life is but a dream. Sweet dreams, everyone. Good night.